Hey everybody, Al Pugliese, Al Pugliese Trains, and it's a treat today because I'm with uh, Fernie Kempinski. How you doing? Hey, you make me look short. Uh-oh, I better get <laughs> down. And behind me is yeah, this this model railroad I'm about to show you, a Civil War model railroad, was in Railroad Model Craftsman, Model Railroader, and I'm going to shut, others. yeah, a couple others, and I'll let Bernie introduce us and take us to a walk-through tour, if that's okay. All right, Bernie, let's start. Where, where do you want to start? Well, we should start here because this is a uh, isolated railroad. No okay. connections to any other railroad. So all the supplies come in here. Okay. So let's set the stage. It's March of 1863 in Virginia. Okay. South of Alexander, about 40 miles, at a little place called Aquia Landing, which is what you're looking at right now. This was a facility used by the r &P Railroad to connect Washington to Richmond. Uh -huh. So back then, if you wanted to take a train from Washington to Richmond, the first thing you did was get on a steamboat because there was no rail connection uh, along this line. So okay. you would take a steamboat uh, down to this location, transfer to the trains, and then go on to Richmond. Wow. Now this is an O scale it's two o rail. O scale, two rail. It's five foot gauge, which is standard O scale. It should be four foot eight and a half. Right. Uh, rare, but there were five foot gauge railroads in the Civil War, mostly in the southern states. Okay. Uh, but because O scale is five foot gauge, I didn't bother changing the gauge of the locomotives. But I did have to hand lay all the track. Yes. Because this is uh, stub turnouts. Like if you look over here, you just went past it. All right. Let's but go. this is a double slip stub switch oh my goodness so it has three positions okay that's one way and most times when my new operators use it they uh -huh. mess it up because like right now you're on say you're coming in on the far track uh-huh you will actually go that way even though the lever set this way okay and if it's set straight up and you come in on the far track you go that way it's it's very confusing it takes a little while to get used takes to. a little while to get used to but basically one switch stand controls all the routes so okay. it's basically a double slip switch and they were pretty common in the civil war because uh, they saved a lot of space this deck um is absolutely drop dead gorgeous board by board and you made some of the stain yourself we were talking about the beautiful reds yeah in this deck well this was not very old at the time of modeling because when the Confederates were here in 1862, they burned the RFMP's wharf. Okay. And so the Union Army, when they got here, the United States Military Railroad rebuilt this wharf. Okay. So this is only like a month old All right. at the time. But there was coal dust from the steamships and the, and the train, so it got a little dirty. Uh -huh. But it's not as heavily weathered. You go to a normal narrow gauge railroad and everything's weathered and the boards right. are falling off. That's not the way this was. Right. So this is an interesting little scene here. This is a family of uh, former slaves that are going to use your quiet landing, get on the boat and go to Washington. And they'll end up living in Alexander. Most of them did. Oh, wow. And so here you see this is the uh, father mm -hmm. discussing with the provost marshal. And then there's a woman talking to the kids. And when my daughter looked at these, she said, Dad, uh, Dad, you made them so muddy. And I said, well, they just walked a long way to get here. Right. Now, these figures, did you 3D print these, or where did you get these? Um, they're from all different sources. Uh, that lady was 3D printed. These are really exquisite. Now, did, so a I lot of these, them. You, they're, they're exquisite. And this little sign, by the way, is the actual sign that was on the Provost Marshal building. Uh -huh. So this is a copy of the building. Uh, oh, that was there. Actually, this is interesting because my philosophy is any building that's in the foreground uh -huh. will get a detailed interior. That's... I just haven't finished doing that one. Oh, wow. You really but... can't see in the windows, but... No, that's fine. Now, this American flag is really cool. It's a weathered... Uh, it has a little bit of age to it. It looks real. It doesn't... Well, here... Do you want to know the story to that? Yes. Okay. So, Lincoln visited here three or maybe four times. And after one of his visits... The men who worked on the United States Military Railroad mm -hmm. uh, said, hey, we want to do something to honor Lincoln and, and celebrate. So they said, we'll, we'll get a flag, 40 feet flag. Wow. And her, um, Wilbur Wright, who was a superintendent of the railroad, wrote a letter to Otter Anderson in Alexandria and said, uh, the men want to put a flag up. They chipped in the money to buy the flag, mm -hmm. and I will pay for the poll. So... I never, I read the message and I never saw a picture of it. And then finally, in the background, 
of one of these pictures, I was re-looking at it. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, you could see the flag. And, and there's so, an eagle one, though. I yeah, just noticed this. Yeah, the eagle's up on the top. It's there's two eagles. See if you can find the other eagle on the railroad. Is he 3D printed? No, he's a lead casting. Um, I think he's from Bollinger. Well, I've never I seen I also him. have uh, seagulls from Bollinger, which I haven't put down yet. So this area is not finished. I saved this area for last uh -huh. because I knew if I finished this part first, I wouldn't finish the rest of the layout because this is where all the fun stuff is. And the locomotives are absolutely exquisite if you want to. By the way, wanna... these are the 3D printed trucks that I've been making. Okay. So I, uh, I just put the extras there so I wouldn't lose them. The, the locomotives are by Schneider Model Trains. Now, I've never he, heard of them. He introduced about... Oh, I don't know, 10 different prototypes, mm -hmm. including four different prototypes for the Civil War, which uh -huh. I have copies of all of those now. And there's one inside there, too. Yeah, that one is the hopped. If we can lift up just to, yeah. I'll get a quick video. God, these are beyond eye candy. I mean, these are <laughs> well, really... What's really going to happen cool. here is, after I built the layout and I was reading another message, I found out that they had a machine shop. At a quiet landing, mm -hmm. and so I'm planning on putting an extension right in here okay. with the boiler house there, and an extension for the machine shop. So I may have to redo this building. Right. Well, let's keep on our tour yeah, here. Yeah. So now. this is a quiet landing. Now, if you look over there, all right, that's right. Burnside's Wharf. Now let's talk about the backdrop. You you painted this backdrop? Yes. Man. Okay. So I did a video on how to paint backdrops. I did an article for Model Railroad Planning on backdrops. I like to hand paint backdrops, although I have used photos in the past. But in my case, there really aren't any color photos in the Civil War. Uh huh. And so I painted them. And this one's interesting because of the way this cloud is up here. Right. So what I wanted to do, this wharf is in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. I wanted to pull your eye in, and I don't want you looking that way where the door is. Right. So that's why that cloud is shaped the way it is. And these big ones up here. To pull the eye. They're pull the eye. So if you watch my video, I discussed this. There's a thing called atmospheric perspective and geometric perspective. Uh -huh. So this is atmospheric perspective, the haze that's on the horizon. This is spectacular, and you painted this. Yeah, I mean, some of these boats are cut out. So I like, right. see that one there? That's a little right. paper cutout from a book. Okay. This is a paper cutout from a book, except I had to paint the flag and the people to blend it in. This really, folks, in, in, in real life, this really looks... And notice how the clouds get real big as they right. go up, because they're like going over your head. Right. And that's the geometric perspective. To pull so the eye. It, it makes the scene look... Look at this, only a foot deep, but it right. makes it look so much deeper. Right. Right? Man. So this is the little yard. They don't really have a yard at a quiet landing. This is more of a storage track back here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they only had six engines and about 60 freight cars. So it wasn't, you know, that's the one thing about this railroad. There's no staging, there's no interchange, and there's no yard. It's a very unusual model railroad. These and yet, oh, go ahead. I'm, 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 it still keeps my operators busy. We're running and we've yet to have a perfect session where everybody did everything perfectly. These locomotives, again, are drop-dead gorgeous. Yeah, that one has a Blue Nami. All right. And, folks, it's battery-powered. Uh, it's uh, called nope, Dead Rail. One's, this one is not Dead Rail. This one's just a Blue Nami. Oh, okay. It has a Keep Alive. And I'm running it for my phone here. Oh, yeah. This one has battery. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I can take this off. Yeah, I can take this off. There's the battery pack. Okay. See, the problem is, there's a big cam motor in there with gearboxes. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of room for the battery and the battery power supply. So, the, well, the uh, can motor, I thought that was in a locomotive, no? No, this one has a tender-driven, big, I think they're called Pittman motors. Yeah, okay. Typical O-scale motor. Okay. This one has a smaller motor. It's not a uh, Pittman, no. I don't think so. I think this one's a can. All and right. there's another one, the Osceola, that has a tiny little Fowhover motor. So the problem is this can only pull six cars. Okay. And the Osceola can only pull four cars. These this cars? This thing will pull like 13, 14 cars. These cars are all scratch built. Yes, these are all scratch built. Um, because I went from Master Model Railroader, I had to do, you know, a passenger oh, car, man. a caboose. So I put the whole interior on uh, this God, car. Let me, let's see the, let me show the, rear, the the viewers the inside of that roof. These are just exquisite. Yeah, so that goes that goes on there. And they didn't really have a passenger car on the acquire line. This one was used on the Orange and Alexandria uh, when the U.S. Military Railroad. So it uh -huh. is a U.S. Military Railroad prototype. Now, here's another one. This is the caboose. This is 94. Oh, this also know. has... Uh, Oh, man. A full look interior. At, look at the weathered timbers. You know, it really... Yeah. Damn. Here's the roof. 
man. That might not be our actual house. These weathered rooms. timbers really, really are beautiful. There's a bed. Yeah, well, they slept in there. Oh, yeah. Look there's a that. bed. There's an... Look, oh, if you look down there, you'll see there's a desk. With paperwork. With a, and a pencil. An O-scale pencil. Oh, I see it. I see it. <laughs> Holy I'm cow. Crazy. No, this is... Uh, this is superb. Now, let's continue our journey right, on the this layout. This is a relatively new addition. Um, this is the embalmer, Dr. Brunel. Okay, embalmer. And, uh, he was down in Fredericksburg, but when the Union abandoned Fredericksburg, I don't know if he came here or not, but uh -huh. I assume that he did. This is a work in progress. This is a nice kit from Berkshire. It really is a nice Oh, wow. Kit. The, the um, couch or the, the upholstery. See, yeah, I haven't painted, finished painting it yet, but that's really fine detail wow. in there. Uh, and then that's one of my mules from the old, oops, the old mule train. Uh -huh. I have three of those mule trains. I have 60 mules. One real big deficiency on my layout is I don't have enough wagons yet. There are wagons everywhere. Because well, that was like your car. That's you know, a your truck. Right. So this, uh, last week I had, or two weeks ago I had an op session and Doug Tagsold was coming. And Doug Tagsold's great, great grandfather was in the Army of the Potomac. He was in the 4th Michigan. Uh -huh. So that's Doug Tagsold's great-grandfather. He goes back to Michigan. He gets captured. Now, is this 3D printed, these, these figures? Uh, that, let's see, that guy... No, that's a, um, a Sash and Saber figure that okay. I swapped the heads. Okay. And these guys are from Knuckle Duster. Damn. He makes some nice figures. Knuckle Free Duster. from odor or infection. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so man. anyway, let's go back to the story. So this is Har Harvey Parker, which is Doug Tagsold's great-great-grandfather. He gets captured, goes to Annsville, comes back to Michigan, and becomes an embalmer. Hmm. And then the whole family, so Doug and they, they call them, I think, funeral directors now. Uh -huh. So I built this when Doug was coming. I said, I better build this and get this it, here before Is he there up. an interior in this? I have uh, to No, ask. this one doesn't because uh, right. where it is, you really can't see in there. Well, it Plus, would be unpleasant. Yeah, there's a picture of a man being embalmed in the Civil War, and it's just... A, it's an unpleasant tree. Yeah. This tunnel porthole scratch built... Yeah, that is actually, okay, there are no tunnels on the real Acquire line, okay. but the real Acquire line didn't have to go behind the wall and through a closet and all that. So that tunnel is actually a copy of the tunnel that's on the Crozet Tunnel on the old Virginia Central, which became the CNO, which is now CSX, Okay. and then it became... Buckingham branch. I Man, these, the, these... Those are just... that's Those aren't finished. That's just sitting right. there. Those are old bonsai trees that will eventually be converted into... Is this trees. an old bonsai tree yeah, that died? that's a dead one. Well, My that... brother and his buddies, when the, one of their trees dies, if it's the right shape, they'll save it for me. Right. And those came from Florida, actually. Yeah, those... It's really hard to find a bonsai yeah. tree that... Oh, I kill are... them. I've had two. I kill like, every bonsai tree... I... My brother is like a world expert on bonsai trees. In uh -huh. fact, in uh, October, we're going to Ecuador... He's going to do a bonsai exhibition, and I'm going to do bird watching. Well, let me pause this, so, and let's go over to the next place on the layout. All right, Bernie, tell tell us about these incredible boats. Okay, well, we'll start with the ones that I didn't make. So this is a Baltimore Clipper from Model Shipyards in South Africa. They're a custom ship model builder. Okay. And uh, they built this to my spec, waterline and all that. They were great to work with. My. Huh. And it got shipped here from South Africa. Uh huh. That noise you hear in the background is the telegraph sending a random message. Oh, so my you'll just have to bear with that. So you ordered the you ordered this boat, and what was the name of the company? I think it was Model Dockyard in South Africa. In if South Africa. Just contact me. Actually, what's it say right here? Here's their builder's plate. This but, model was built by Stephen and Kino. Moss Bay, South Africa. Yeah, mm. they were really good. They were they have they are a ship model company for a museum. Anyway, they built this one for me. Okay. This one I started, my brother cut the water line down on his bandsaw because at the time I didn't have a bandsaw. Uh -huh. And then Brian Boyles finished it for me and he did a really nice job. I love the way he did the sails. These and, are these are just and, and these are what, about what scale these are. These are O scale, exactly. O okay. scale. See here's the problem. Man are these uh, pretty this, this one I'm scratch building. Okay, hold I on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come around this uh, tent. We've got a. Is this thing a submarine? Or, uh, no, no, no. This is the uh, Monitor um, Passaic. This was the one they built after the Monitor. It okay. was a Union warship. And it really shouldn't be here. Okay. It was in the James River in December. It broke down. They towed it up the Potomac right past here. Uh huh. Fixed it and then went back. So in March it shouldn't be here. But I, I started building it, and I was having fun building it, and then I realized. Ooh. 
Those are the guns. Look at that. So it's not a submarine. No, it's it, an ironclad it's a, warship. It's an ironclad warship. Yeah, so the first, it's the second ironclad warship that the Union built. Man. And, and you scratch built these cannons? Or yes. Three? These are the, these these were made on my lathe and my printer. This is before Holy. I had a 3D printer. Holy. I used my laser cutter to make that. So oh my God, and this rotates. The, this yeah, and these these things are the uh, armored doors that hide this. It was a crazy design. That this is a 15 inch rodman, which is actually too big. Uh -huh. If you look and it doesn't fit in the hole. Oh my God. So they fired it from the inside, and the first time they fired it, they had this thing called a smoke box. It mm -hmm. blew up. <laughs> so can you imagine firing 15 inch cannon now it was open you know open air to the top right. still the noise god the noise to had to be beyond but it was a very good cannon there was a one of these got in a battle down in north carolina with the confederate atlanta mm -hmm. it fired two shots and the atlanta surrendered just they penetrated through the armor and right. each shot like killed 16 guys Jeez. or something Let's... but i never finished it because i thought you know, it really doesn't belong here. I really should have other ships like this one, which is um, under construction. Yeah, that's a that's kit. I've been working on that kit for years. It's just not a good kit. Be, so I think I'm going to have to scratch build the whole. That's thing. okay. Now let's talk about this this ship here. What okay. this is a rail ship of some kind. This is the first ever car ferry. This was developed by Herman Hopt. It's two Schuylkill barges okay. lashed together, and then. Uh, put the rails on it, and you'll notice that the trains come in sideways into this, right? Okay. Kind of like a transfer table. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, and it was a little more stable that way. Then later on, they figured if they rotated it, they wouldn't have to move the barge to unload. But Hop says, in and in a, he wrote an analysis of this, mm -hmm. uh, that it took about an hour to load and unload. And then the tug would come over. And uh, the tug would actually come over here. Okay. Wow. You scratch build that this tug? This one I scratch built, yeah. Damn. Really? And then you would put lines on it and would pull it away. They didn't do it like, you know, modern ones would lash on. Right. They would do it with lines. And they were pretty good seamen. They, they knew how to move their stuff around. All right. Uh, so this is, this is the first ever car float. It went from Alexandria to here. And then later it went to other places too. All right. Let me pause this. All right, uh, Bernie, tell us about these two boats. All right, so this one I am, I am scratch building myself. I okay. actually made a model of this one for the Ale Lyceum in N scale. Okay. It fits on your hand. So th this is interesting because it's called a Pungi. This boat is a Chesapeake Bay classic schooner. They actually built them in Alexandria in the Civil War. Oh, wow. And uh, this broke off. Uh, so I'm scratch building this. It's got fairly simple rigging, so I think I can handle it. Those kind of boats, too much rigging. I don't right. like to tie all those knots. This one I bought from a guy in England. We were thinking about going into business together. I was going to be his U.S. representative, but when I got this sample model, I wasn't that happy with it. It's uh -huh. not what I call fine scale, and so I never really pursued it with him anymore. How, just if I can ask, how much would one expect to pay for an incredible big boat like that this? That one was 4000 Right. That's worth every penny of it. Brian, I told Brian I would pay him 2000 to finish that boat. Right. And he said, oh, that's a generous offer, blah, blah, blah. Then he goes, oh, my God, what did I get into? It's right. a lot of work. Oh, it's it's. This insane. one was not as much. This was, I think, maybe three or four or 500 something like that. Right. And... And anyway, let's, it's amazing let's, they ship them around the world. They don't get damaged. So this area is not finished yet. Mm -hmm. I still have to, uh, you know, secure these buildings. Okay. Now, what are um, these buildings? Are these barracks? Just warehouses? No, they're warehouses. Okay, they're not barracks. Remember, all the supplies for uh, an army of 120,000 people and 60,000 animals came into this wharf or this wharf. All right. Well, let's let's pan over. And again, I just your painting skills are exquisite. Well, these that's a cutout. Is it? It doesn't this look I did like paint. it. I painted this by myself. I did paint right. this. I did paint this. Let's uh, take a little journey here. Yeah, so these I did paint. All right. Oh, that's okay. an actual Baltimore clipper. Back a there. A modern photograph of a replica. The it pride of, that's the pride of Baltimore. It doesn't look like you a picture, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It looks, I don't know what you did, whether you shellacked it or, clear, well, or flat cleared it. I, I, I do do, okay. When I use a photo on the on the layout, mm -hmm. I do try to make it look like everything else. Okay. Because I tell people when I paint my backdrop, I'm not painting photorealism. Right. I'm painting my layout onto the backdrop. Okay. So it's kind of not I won't say cartoon, and it's not impressionist. It's it's halfway to photorealism. Wow. You know, it's because these 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 are not photorealist. They're models, right. and so now these guys are interesting. These figures are from my friend Brian Camera. Uh -huh. He's a commercial artist in. Connecticut, and he works for the you know the advertising agencies in uh, New York, and he can draw people 
in every possible pose. Oh so he God. sent me all these figures on a white background. Right. And then uh, I look around, and if I need one, I can cut it out and stick it on my railroad. Well, let's pause it here and go into the other section. All right. Well, Bernie's upstairs getting some coffee, and uh, I'll take advantage of showing you some of these magazine covers of this incredible O-scale two-rail layout. And uh, it's been featured in Model Railroader. It's been featured in Railroad Model Craftsman. Uh, this was October 2019. And this feature here was April 2024. So that's a recent one. And we'll get back to the trains. All right, Bernie. So this is the next section you walk into as the trains come through the wall and come into this section. So right. take us on a tour. Yeah, so when you come out of a quiet landing, you actually come into this room, but then you go back into this closet and then come out here because of the radius. You know, okay. On scale, you need a big radius. Right. So that's the other end of that tunnel portal we just looked at. Okay. And now you come into Brook. Man. Brook is, there are no photos of Civil War era Brook. Okay. Where is Brook? It's um between Fredericksburg and... A quiet landing. Okay. It's a little town. It the, currently this is the um, VRE railroad. This is CSX now. Okay. It's double track now, and what happens now is it goes like this. It goes north, but back in the Civil War, it curved along what is now Brook Road uh -huh. and went to a quiet landing. Okay. These and, these figures uh, again are these three uh, D printed or just you you find okay, these in all different these? places like. That's an Aspen Miniatures. That okay. might be that might be Artista. Okay. That's probably Aspen. Oh, I don't. These are years ago. I did right. these. I don't know. This guy is Mr. Pittinger. He was mentioned in Hop's book as the guy in charge of his oxen. Oxen were a big deal in the Civil War mm -hmm. because those were your heavy equipment. Ooh. And so when you read the letters from the chief engineer, mm -hmm. he's always talking about I lent my oxen to this infantry brigade or I did this. And I said, like, why is he, you know, what's the deal with the oxen? And then I realized that's an important construction asset. Did, did you uh, 3D print, or where'd you get these oxen? So, no, these are from... Um, Good Lord. Not Sash and Sabre. They're another company that makes 40 millimeter figures, Trident miniatures, I okay. believe. He looks a little pissed off, this boy here. You can see <laughs> his ribs, a little bit of the rib, well, actually, which animals, is good. Animals back then were not like they are now because they right. didn't have all the antibiotics, they didn't have all the super vitamins and all that stuff. Right. And in fact, when we get over there, we'll talk about the cows. All cows had horns back then. Okay. Which, I'm a city boy from Brooklyn. <laughs> I don't know anything about cows. So I put this picture of these cows on the internet. On uh -huh. my, like, oh, I did that too. And everybody and said, like, it. your cows are great, but they need horns. So yeah. now I made horns on my laser. And now all my I have all my horns. So cows. female... Female cows and male cows yes, have horns. Yes, apparently. Yeah. Hey, I could be wrong, but that's what the internet people told me, and I believe them. Well, I, I built a model, <laughs> Howard Zane, and I, I mean, we, right, uh, a happy way. cow, and I had that. Oh, let's, well, let's keep going. All right, yeah, let's now, this is Brooke. So it's, Brooke, a lot of this stuff is freelance, because I don't know what really was here. Right. And he does talk about having a sawmill right, in his me, stuff. So cut. this is a scratch-built sawmill. God, oh this man. whole thing I made on my laser and uh, did not 3D print this one. Uh -huh. And then um, this guy, Gordon, was the first commercial millionaire in the United States. So all the millionaires prior to him uh -huh. were from real estate, like really? George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Oh, uh -huh. there's a commander-in-chief over there. Uh oh. Say hello to the commander-in-chief. Oh, hi, commander-in-chief. How are you? Hello. Were you playing golf, Alicia? <laughs> I was playing golf. You were playing golf. Alicia? All right, now, Bernie, what's this building up here? Did... That is the stone house from Manassas. Okay. So, like I said, I picked the buildings for this location from other spots in Virginia because I don't have any photos of what this really looked like. Mm -hmm. and do you notice anything funny about that building? It's S scale because uh, to make it forced perspective, forced perspective, it's not HO scale. Oh, and wow. those figures are 28 millimeter war game figures which are 156 scale okay so they go in the background i have about 700 figures on the railroad and the smaller ones go toward the back and the big ones like the 143rd figures they uh -huh. go to the front did you these look like a real split rail fence did you split the rail and actually yes. <laughs> do this? i uh, made them on my laser though i simplify it jesus this but is every exquisite. rail does get a little bit of tapering and work to fit in the slot. Here's an interesting guy. He looks like a butcher. He's covered in blood. Well, 
is he a butcher or is he a medical guy? There's no fighting going on right now. We're right. in what they call winter quarters. Everybody just camping out. Okay. And so that that building is a vernacular building. It would be considered the cookhouse. And it uh, in the back room was where slaves lived. Okay. So the Union has occupied it and they're using it as their kitchen. Wow. This house here, this, this big um, inn, mm -hmm. which I call the Spotswood Inn, that was uh, in Charlottesville. Okay. And the figure you see there is a woman who stayed behind to keep an eye on her uh, building when the Union were there. And what happened in this region was the pro-Southern people, mm -hmm. the whites that were pro-Southern, they left. They okay. fled. They fled. The slaves escaped and they went north. 10,000 slaves got out of here on this railroad and then the, the wharf. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then um, the Union occupied a lot of these buildings. And we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get down there because that's another pro Union farmer that stayed. Okay. So that the place was basically abandoned. And this county, Stafford County, was really underpopulated for another 50, 70 years until now it's. Um, you know, bedroom community for Washington, and so people, it's starting to get look like Fairfax. Now. This is magnificent. Is this is this actual? That was factory painted like that. This that is, is the that uh, this engine is called McCallum. Okay, this is actually painted in 1864, so it's an anachronism. Uh, he was the chief of the United States Military Railroad, so he stayed in Washington. Okay, Hop was his subordinate, and he was the field guy. So Hop was here and in Alexandria. Uh, Hop was a colonel and then became a general. Everybody else were civilians. Who they did were, this? Who did this locomotive? SMR, which is Schneider's model trains. Again, Schneider's model trains. And now, were they an importer or were they actually the? Was he the fellow he, making? He, these? No, he imported them from. Uh, I think they were made in Korea. Okay, maybe Sam Hongzo. We're not not quite sure who might have made these. He never told me. He's okay. you know he's very nice. He's a super nice guy. He lives in Florida now. And he these, was a professor in. Uh, New Jersey. And these came co painted with the color. I mean, yeah, these they are, came like that. These are spectacular. Yeah, like, uh, I was that's telling. A, that's what the real engine looked like. I was telling Bernie, <laughs> folks, if you if you know of one of these that pops up for sale, you need to contact me. Yeah, okay, I'll I'll keep my eye open for you. It, it's something also, like this. Notice the white flag. Okay, so uh -huh. modern railroaders will say white means the second section, but in the Civil War, white was the opposite meaning. It meant you are on the schedule. And red was an extra train. Okay, man. So look if at you this. see a train with a red, then you know you're an extra. And you model winter, obviously, or well, it's actually March. Okay, March. So the deciduous trees have not started greening up, but the grass is starting to green. And this is like old golden golden weed or golden, yeah, no golden rod, I guess. Okay, this is from Cine Express. Okay, and he gets it from I think Silfor. Yeah, these are super trees. Right. And those trees were built by uh, Sterling Models. There was a woman in Massachusetts. I think she lived in Massachusetts. And she made those trees for me, but she passed away right after she made a batch for me, so I never got any more from her. You know, I've never seen this. What is this, a grist mill back here? Yeah, that grist this mill. This is incredible. That mill is actually on Pope's Head Road in Fairfax County. Okay. And uh, it wasn't on the Aquia Line. And there was no mill on the choir line, as far as I know. But when I took out my old layout, uh -huh. there was a gap in the backdrop back there. And I said, well, instead of trying to putty it, in, and I'll just put in a mill here, because I wanted to do a mill. Uh -huh. Now, this, this girl is an interesting story. That's Nellie Barnes. Okay, hold so, on. I'm going to zoom in on her. Folks, zoom, forgive zoom me on, uh, here if it's a little... That's Nellie. Okay, so they lived, her family owned this mill. This mill is still there. It's on Pope's Head Road in Virginia, in Fairfax. Uh -huh. And one day when the Union were occupying this area, one of the soldiers stole her pig, her pet pig. Oh, my God. And so she cried and cried, and her mom said to her with a servant, go down to the Union camp and see if you can get her pig back. So they went down there. The sentries said, what do you want? She explained herself. They took her to the commander. The commander says, okay, do you know who took your pig? She goes, yes, sir. Can you identify him, sir? So he had the company fall out, and she goes, that's him. And the commander says, do you have the pig? Yes, sir. Okay, give it back to her and carry it back to the farm. Holy and so God. then she writes in her diary, I'm sure he was executed when, I, when he got back. <laughs>
So that's the story of Nellie Barnes and her pig. Kind of, or, sorry, Nettie. N-E-T-T-I-E. Nettie Barnes. Nettie Barnes and her pig. You know, I was going to... That's all documented in a book that the uh, Fairfax County put out. Look at that forced perspective shot of that little house way back there. Yep. I like... Uh, those are my favorite scenes is where the road right. blends into the backdrop. There's another one over here that I really like. In fact, that's my favorite over there. And, and Bernie... Now, you see the walls cracked a little bit? Yep. Here, I got to fix that. Let me we had a flood bit. down here. Uh-huh. And we had to jack up the railroad a couple inches to get oh, the old Jesus. floor out. And that's where all that cracking started. And I've been going around and gradually fixing it as I notice it. But this, there was a big crack right along here that I had to fix. So oh, I'm getting there. Well, okay, you talked about how many times you spiked the rail four times every... Four, four spikes per tie, approximately 22,000 spikes. Man, and look at this, four percent, those tents way in the background. Yeah, that one I painted. Man. That's what an army camp would look like in the Civil War. Right. And you got and you were telling me, and I didn't know this, you were telling me that they cut down a lot of trees back then. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, Virginia was fairly actually not Virginia. The United States East Coast was practically denuded of trees by the time of the, of the Civil War. Jeez. Well, here here's a camp. Tell us about this camp. Yeah, so this is just a typical camp. Those little buildings, those little, we would call them hooches in the current army. Right. But back then they called them shebangs. Mm -hmm. They would take shelter halves or a little canvas, and then they would build a little log cabin around it. And they would they lived here for six months. Uh-huh. And that's what they lived in. And they would write, we have all the comforts of home. We have furniture. We have an oven. Uh, oh, we have a doctor you, who fell over here. How did you, you, you scratch build all these tents? Yeah, those are scratch built. Now, what did you use on this tent here? Is this is that a that's, resin or what? Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, plastic casting from a company called Renata. Okay. Renata from England. Okay. That's a British bell tent, which looks very much like a Sibley tent. Okay. So the, the things that look like teepees, they're called Sibley tents. So Sibley was a general for the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. Well, first he was a, uh, an officer in the United States Army. He was stationed in Utah, and he saw the Indians living in teepees. So he came up with this idea for a tent, and he sold it to the U.S. military, and he was supposed to get a commission of $2, I think, for uh -huh. a tent. Wow. And then when the war broke out, he went to the South. And so he never got any money for the Sibley tents, and the Army built like 60,000 of them. What, tell us about this little building here. Well, let me finish the Sibley story. Okay. So because he went to the South, uh -huh. his family sued to get money, and they lost. They didn't get any money. Oh, the family that yeah. lost the suit. He didn't, uh, by the way, I noticed one of my telegraph lines broke. Uh-oh. Got to fix that. Yeah, they had two lines up until they got to Stoneman's in this one line. So this is just a little um, woodworking shop. Okay. And I say this is my dad and my two brothers arguing about, well, how to cut a piece of wood. But if you look inside there. I did, yeah. And I broke it. I was changing the light up here, uh -huh. and my elbow hit this, and I cracked it. That's why it looks like that. Oh, wow. But this is a toolkit that I sell from Alchem Scale Models. You can you can get this O-Scale toolkit, oh, and it's like a 19th century carpenter's kit. But those tools, my, I mean, I have tools like that in my garage. This is called a spoke shave, uh -huh. where you make wagon wheels. Uh, those are saw horses. There's a harp saw. Wow. God, this is just beautiful. I'm, I'm just... This is an interesting uh, thing. What? This is based on a prototype photo. This There's only one photo, and it's from this angle. And it shows, this would be called a stockade. Mm -hmm. And you only see it from this angle, so I had to guess what would be in there. Okay. And uh, it's sharp. Be careful. When you're working on the lights up here, these things will get you. Oh, yeah. Oh, so this siding is on a slight grade. Not intentionally. Mm -hmm. So the cars that go here have working brakes. Okay. So the way I do that is, it should be right in here, my waybill. Let me see where it says working brakes on the waybill. Mm -hmm. So I will, when I'm setting up an op session, I will make sure that the cars that come here have working brakes, so that way they don't slide down the hill. Right. See, I'll release the brakes there, and then I go down the hill. Right. Oh, you actually have working yeah, brakes. Yeah, and then you tighten the brake, and then it doesn't move. So you, the brakes actually work on these cars. Yeah. Otherwise, the cars will roll down this hill and go onto the main line. Now, this next scene, folks, I'm, if I can squeeze by you, this is a, a, a scene that I fell in love with. This is a scene that's been on YouTube before, and this bridge scene is 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 beyond spectacular. And Oops. it's hard for me to get far enough away. Let me bear with me a second, there Bernie. It is. Let me. And tell us about this 
this bridge scene. This is just incredible. Okay, so this this is Potomac Creek Bridge. Okay. It's actually the third bridge. Well, there were four bridges here. This is the third one. Okay. So the first one may have looked a little bit like this. Uh -huh. That was built by the RFMP. No photos exist. Okay. Then they built a trestle, which I don't have a picture of here. That's okay. That's the famous bean pole and cornstalk trestle that Lincoln and Stanton walked across. Oh, I didn't know that. And then Hop took that down uh -huh. and put this one up. And he s did not interrupt traffic when he built it. So I studied the pictures and I said, how did he do that? And if you look closely, you see how this overhangs? Yeah. So what happened was the old trestle was here. These are the um, log cribs that held the, the foundation for the old trestles. Uh -huh. So the old trestles went up here. They built this bridge around the old trestle. And then once this part was in place, they would take their, and they left the lumber laying on the ground. That's what some of this lumber is. But this will be scavenged by the soldiers later for firewood. This is every so, square inch scratch built, and this is spectacular. Yeah, there's, see, see, there's, there's the picture pictures. of that, um, that's the picture of that thing we were just looking at, the stockade. Okay. And you can see there were some buildings down there, but that, this is the only photo I have of this. Of this bridge? Yeah. No, no, I have other photos of this okay. bridge. But of this side of the shore. Oh, okay. So that's the only shot of that and oh, that. Okay, of the stockade. And the Confederates built this entrenchment on the on this side. All right. I'll, and the Union uh, reoccupied it. I'll get over there. So Let you me. see this guy here? All right. Let's get over. All right. Yes. You see that guy? That's based on a photo. There was a daredevil. There's a daredevil. There he is. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Why? And there's two pictures of him. So obviously the photographer got a kick out of him going out on there. Now some people back then were afraid of heights. Not every, you know, like Stanton, the Secretary of the War back then, uh -huh. when he walked across the trestle, the one before this, uh -huh. two other guys had to hold his hand because he was afraid of walking across the bridge. This is, in reality, this should be 80 feet off the ground uh -huh. or off the river. So this is about a 50% um, scale down. Rendition. How long did this take you to build? About a month. This looks like a couple thousand hours worth of work. No, no, no. It to me, I mean. Well, these parts are all laser cut. Look. And the, no. bridge, the bridge was prefabricated in Alexandria, the real one, mm -hmm. and assembled on site with a hammer. No other tools were needed, although they had to use a wrench. You've got... So he's exaggerating a little bit when he says that because they had to tighten these truss rods. Right. You've got hundreds of bolt, uh, individually placed bolts in this thing. If you go to my blog, I did a breakdown. About 3,000 individual pieces in this bridge. Wow. Something like that. And you were talking uh, about these guys over here. Let me zoom in this, over here. This little emplacement, there was actually two of them here. They was uh, developed by the Confederates or set up by the Confederates and then the Union just reoccupied it. And they had this type of gun, which is called a, a three-inch rifle. Man. That was a typical Yankee gun. The Confederates had a few of them, but mostly other ones. Well, wow. let me get a shot of the bridge. And if you notice, these are African-American guys here. Uh-huh. So they actually shouldn't be here, but um, I had them from another project, and I wanted to put them, so I have them on the railroad here. They, they don't really come into the military until like 1864. Okay. But so that I'm a, that's okay. I like having them on here. This is just magnificent. So let's continue our journey. And folks, right, we so will that's have... the bridge. We will be running a train... So uh, then we're, this is Stoneman Stations, which is um, now called Leland Station on the VRE, if you take the commuter train. Uh -huh. And uh, these are more African-American guys. So a lot of the former slaves, they came to Alexandria and they got hired by the railroad and they worked for the railroad. They had about 300 guys that worked on the railroad. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know the full percentage of uh, former slaves or not. But they, uh, this was like their first job that they got where they're being paid for their for their labor. So that was pretty for the cool. union there. Yeah, they're working for the union, and they were fantastic. I mean, the the U.S. Military Railroad did amazing engineering feats. Throughout and you the say, year. what was the name of this uh, house? This is house? Stoneman Station. Okay, Stoneman. This is Station. based on. There are two photos of this location, and one good thing is one from each angle. Mm -hmm. This is the only thing in this room that's not finished. This should not be here. This should be a caboose. Something like this mm -hmm. on blocks, and then the line goes up. I just have to finish that. I have to build a caboose. The the roof on this uh, that's uh, canvas. Canvas. It looks real. It is. Yeah, it's canvas. made out of. Um, by the way, I leave my buildings loose that way. If I hit them or anything, they don't right. break. Because um, this is an operating railroad. Let's take a look at the. Uh, yeah, we can pull that up. 
And that's just something. So there's like a little cutout. See the little cutout? Mm -hmm. So when, normally you wouldn't see that. He's just a two-dimensional guy. Okay. But when you put this on, that's one of Brian's cutouts. Wow. See, and then you look in there. He looks like a real guy. Oh, yeah. This And then it snakes around. Right. So this is a, the big, this is a good passing sign. It's an important spot on the railroad. This stone wall is based on a stone wall that's down at Fredericksburg. Okay. Um, this is a picket camp where soldiers that are guarding this bridge would stay temporarily. Man, this is They would be here for like a week and then they'd go back to their hooches or their shebangs. So they lived in pup tents when they were down there. And you can see we've got like a pair of pants, laundry drying. We've got a blanket over here drying, another blanket. And uh, here's the officer. This is getting to be about 15 years old now, so it's getting a little dusty. It's beautiful. Look at, look at that. And they're guarding this bridge. Here. They're guarding this bridge. Uh, sometimes I'll put a figure down here. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. He's probably someplace else now. Um, this is a classic military trestle. This is Claiborne Creek, which the railroad had to cross mm -hmm. several times to get there. And this particular trestle is a military-style trestle that Herman Hopp developed. Uh, it's got, notice the bents are a little different. Mm -hmm. Normal railroads have the bents straight under the stringers, but he came up with this W concept that doesn't need as much uh, lumber to build, so it's quicker to build. And then we come across up here. This is a battery that uh, I call Battery Schaefer, named after a friend of mine who passed away. Mm -hmm. And it's just helping guard the railroad. There right. were some batteries of artillery like that. Let's see if I can get a closer, oh yeah. This thing is called a, a Chevaux de Free. Mm -hmm which is a type of temporary obstacle. So say this was being attacked by cavalry, they could move these across the tracks okay. and chain them together, and that way they create like a temporary wall. Wow. They, they were using the Civil these War. These look like you use real sticks. They are. They're uh, drilled out of a, a log. Wow. Actually, I started with square stock. Laser cut all the holes or drilled all the holes and then carved it to make it look like a log. And, and then let me things. zoom out here. This is Primer Farm. So this is another example of a pro-Union family that lived down there. So this was Primer. He had his son fought for the Union, mm -hmm. and he, the rest of them stayed here. The Union made this his headquarters twice. And so the family lived upstairs, and the Union would use the downstairs for their headquarters. Two different generals, mm -hmm. um, Whipple right. and Birney. Whipple gets killed at Chancellorsville. He was a really good general. No one's ever heard of him because he got killed too early. Oh, wow. And so this is their farm. After the war was over, he filed a claim for what we would say now is $80,000 in value. That's a lot of money. For the damage that the soldiers did. They chopped down 40 of his fruit trees. Why they chopped down the fruit trees, I don't know. Right. They took some of his hogs, and they chopped down a bunch of his trees. So here you see a scene of Union soldiers chopping down some of his uh, trees. These, these should be, I haven't painted these yet. This is the stacked weapons. Uh -huh. Anyone who's been in the army knows that you don't just lay your weapons on the ground. You would stack them in like a little triangle. Right. And so I need to do that there. This is exquisite. And then here's my horny cows. Remember I told you about the cows? Yes, yeah, so female cows could have horns too. Apparently. Yeah, because I've well, got a I cow know. and it has horns. I, I, for me, wildlife is pigeons and uh, rats. See, I right. grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, so here's his wife. Or, I'm sorry, that's his daughter. That's him. And then here's his wife milking a cow over here. Now, and this this is the guy that filed the eighty thousand dollar suit. Diet. Okay, <laughs> for them cutting down all the. Yeah. Did he get the money from the government or not? Yeah, he did because oh, he, he was did. a pro union guy. He was uh, they honored the claim. Any damage that the union did to your your material, you could be reimbursed at the end of the war if you were a loyal citizen. Now this is another tunnel goes into the other room, folks. So let right. me. I'm going to pause it and let's go into the other section. Okay. I, I, Bernie, I'm overwhelmed with the beauty of this layout. I'm sorry. <laughs> this area is not finished. This is one of the unfinished areas. Eventually, it's supposed to look like this. Okay. And uh, there'll be a farmhouse up there. And that's the tunnel we just came out of, folks. Right. And we're into another room. And this is the main room. So this, um, this is, again, uh, Mueller's Creek, which is a branch of Claiborne Creek. Okay. It snakes around. Uh, this is a typical type of bridge they would do in the Civil War because earth moving was real expensive and real hard to do. Uh -huh. So if you had to go across a, a flat like this, you would just build a trestle. It was much faster. Wow. And this... then you uh, come in here. Back there is the balloon camp where um, Thaddeus Lowe had his balloon, and he would go up in the air and watch the Confederates across the river. So to my right is the Rappahannock River. All right. 
Now, what, okay, the balloon camp. Oh, now, I don't know much about the history of the balloons in the Civil War. I didn't. That, they, this is the last place, really, they used it. After this, the Union, um, the, the conventional soldiers and officers were not that excited about the balloon. Okay. And so... Um, there was a dispute over the pay for the between Lowe and the Major, and so Lowe just quit. Wow. And he took his expertise for them. So they used balloons as reconnaissance in the Civil War. Right. So I didn't it was know basically that. the Air Force. Right. I had no clue. But it was run by the Army. Just, and then here, They called it the Balloon Corps. The Balloon Corps. Yeah, so this, uh, this is Falmouth. This is the end of the line. If you keep going that way, you would cross the Rappahannock River and go to Fredericksburg. Okay. But the Union at this point is only here. They were at Rappahannock in, in May of 63, but in March they're not. Or correction, May of 62. But in March of 63, they're not. So they set up a camp here. They did not have a turntable there. Okay. They would just come down and back up. Later he was going to survey why uh, J.B. Clow was going to do it, but they never got to that. Wow. So, But I need a way to turn my engines, because my right. engines really need to go forward. Right. And so this is a copy of the uh, turntable at Manassas. Okay. And is that turntable still there? No, 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 in a museum. Or Everything is gone in Manassas. Okay. In fact, Manassas wasn't even a town in the Civil War. It's really, kind of, it's crazy. Manassas developed after the Civil War. Was it called Manassas though? Back it was in called the Civil Manassas War? Junction. Oh, Manassas. And there was Junction. a railroad Y there. Okay? okay. And they had this little turntable. Now this is a manual throw, but it does have the electronics so that it, um, you know, won't short. And then this here is just another workshop, and again with my philosophy. I like to detail the things up front. Oh, yeah. Look at those clamps. Yeah, those are castings from somebody. I forget who. Look at maybe, that. Uh, maybe Wiseman or Wiesman. I don't know how he yeah. says it. Uh, All right. So, uh, yeah, here's the rest of We've got the pump house, another water tank. Keep breaking the, the rod because it's wood. Wow. My daughter helped make this. This was the old station that was here. They, they burned it down. Oh, wow. And how did you achieve that? Did you light it on fire? Or? Actually, yeah. My daughter uh, scored. Uh, I built the, the uh, chimney and the foundation, and then she went outside and scorched a bunch of wood, and then we piled them in there and put some God, black cinders and things. The painting, again, the painting of the backdrop blending into this. It's is... like this here is a photo of the Wyatt House down at Cold Harbor, but I take it into Photoshop, and I make it look more like my painting as opposed to just a right. regular photo. It, it doesn't look like, folks, that's what I've been trying to say. Yeah. It doesn't look like a photo glued on. It looks like you painted it. Right. But, I mean, it, and nothing looks painted. Everything looks real. Well, this is actually a photo of the real, there used to be a museum called the White Oak Museum, and they had a replica of these tents, these mm. things. And you, so that's a photo of the things. But like I said, I photoshopped them to make them look more like a painting. I've never seen a tent with a chimney. It must be like a well, general's tent or something. It's or? just the, it's it's really a log cabin with a canvas roof. That's okay. what it is. And then like four to six guys would live in there. Okay. That's Herman Hopp, by the way, and that's George Stevenson visiting from uh, England. Oh my God. <laughs> and then uh, this this scene here. This is down the Pamplin Museum has a recreation of these cabins. Okay. Let me. I'm coming to you here. Just okay. And so I just was down there. I took a photo of what was at the Pamplin Museum. And then put it on the backdrop. And then I take Brian's figures and I stick them on there to, to make it look like soldiers sitting around. This is absolutely beautiful. Here's this, this line of soldiers is also, I think I used Brian's artwork to create that. These figures were painted by a friend of mine who lives in Canada. He just wanted to contribute to the railroad. And so he, he painted these guys and a couple others and shipped them to me. And the, the, the rolling stock is exquisite, and a lot of the brakes work on a lot of these cars. Only the only about five cars that work in brakes. But it's the a ones, pain in the neck to build them. And these hay bales. Um, these are scratch built. They're little pieces of balsa wood. Then you flock them, and then this is how they wrapped them in the Civil War with a cord and wood stakes. They did have one coal train a month. Really? That's herd. all? Yeah, and I think it was only to Falmouth, and I think it was for the general stove. Because the general's headquarters is up the hill here. In fact, if you look at this little burnt house over here. The one we just left. That's the Phil... No, this one. Oh, another one. This okay. is Phillips' house. So this was Burnside's headquarters, and then when Hooker took over, Hooker moved to a little different location. Some soldiers were living in that house, mm -hmm. and they accidentally burnt it down. Oh, God. And so the Phillips' house was destroyed. Well... Bernie, I appreciate the education of this. This layout was not only a work of art, but it's an education about the Civil War. I learned yeah, a lot that a, I didn't know. Yeah, that's 
uh, it combines my interest of military history, modeling, model railroading, painting, electronics. It's really uh, an interesting conglomeration of things. It's not your st you know your temp standard railroad. There's no yard. Right. You know, uh, it's just it's. It's magnificent. And folks, please watch part two. This is going to be part one. Part two, we're going to run some trains. So you might say, well, you guys didn't run any trains. Oh, we're going to be running some trains. So if that's okay with you, Bernie, we'll do part two or we'll yeah. run some trains. Yeah, let's run a train. All Which right. one do you want to run? Well, let me let me put an end to this video right. and uh, we'll start part two. And this train here is the general special. So <laughs> oh boy. there was an incident where Burnside, they wouldn't pick him up. It's a long story. It's on my blog. So after that, they said, keep wherever the commanding general is, uh -huh. keep a locomotive in steam for his use. Oh my God. So right now, the general is in Falmouth, so they have an engine here in case he needs to go someplace. All right. Well, stay tuned, folks, for part two, running some trains. Thanks for watching.